Hey guys, Hu Shang here. Welcome to another Hu Shang Tutorials video. In this guide, we're going to be taking a look at a safe, super safe robo build that I did on ladder here against Timothy, Lord Timorous, on his other account. And he's about uh, 5.6, 5.8k, so he's a super strong player. Um, but sometimes he gets a little salty, <laughs> as you might have seen in the intro. But that's okay, we all get salty sometimes playing StarCraft. So I get my first gate, I'm getting my gas. Something I've been doing recently in this new Cyber First meta is just to lane this first scouting probe. So if you go for a Nexus first, oftentimes what you would do is send this scouting probe um, right after the gate. And the reason you needed to do that is because when you got to their base, you needed to decide if you could go Nexus first or if you needed to get Cyber first because they were proxying you. But since we're going Cyber first anyways, I think it makes a lot of sense to just delay this, this scout. Um, there's nothing we're really going to change this early on anyways. Like based on this scout timing, we can easily get a Zealot in time still. So there's no there's no huge advantage to doing the, uh, the earlier scout. But okay, so we see this SCV. We basically know he's expanding at this point. I almost got caught. <laughs> kind of tight. But I do see the expansion. And that's the important thing anyways. Is that we see that he's expanding. So I come back home. And back here we're going to be getting our stalker in a second. Warp gate. Let's go see what uh, Timorous is up to. He was going to go marine actually. I, I didn't look at this replay before, but he went straight into reactor. Um, maybe because he saw my probe go back home? I'm not sure, but he went straight for a reactor. So we could have came back in with our probe and harassed his SCV a little bit if we knew he was doing this. <clears throat> the benefit of this fast stalker build is that he can't see our tech as easily. We can kind of shoo him away. It's scary for him too because if he comes up here right now, then my stalker might still be on the cliff. And so he's just going to take more damage. So he has to kind of wait over here until he heals up. So I snuck around and pushed him away. Um, and we almost get this uh, Reaper. Hashtag spoilers. <laughs> so I came over here. I expected him to have run this way, but uh, I didn't see it. Which means there's no way that it could have been up there. So I came back down. And lo and behold, here it is. But a very nice Reaper by him, Reaper Nade, and he just barely sneaks away with 3 health. So that was kind of unfortunate. I kerneled my Stalker here to see if I could deny the tech, but he just went uh, back anyways. And then I'm going to add on my 2 more gates. You kind of have to do this. If you're not adding these 2 gates, you're going to be susceptible to a lot of early pushes, like Uthermal's 111, the uh, Marine Tank Liberator build. So make sure you get these safety gates. We don't need to use these, but we just need to have them in case we need them. First thing I made from the robo is an observer, and this is going to tell us what he's doing. But if we go to Timorous's vision here, we can see that he's playing a mind drop build. So basically against this, you don't need too many stalkers. <clears throat> you just need to defend both sides, and you can easily go into uh, a fast third and a fast tech structure. So, no huge threat here, pretty standard stuff, as we will see in a second. And then, behind this, I'm getting two more gases, and I'm getting my Robo Bay. And this is the first time that uh, we actually see what he's doing. Really, really lucky for me, though, I just barely see his medevac. I did see that in the game. So, right here, I'm uh, knowing that he's going for a mind drop, and so my reaction is to send out my stalkers to try to intercept. Maybe I'll pause here though. If you see this, like if you don't see the medevac, it's fine because this is exactly what you would expect to see if they're mind dropping. So their starport is building a tech lab. It's not quite finished. It just started. So you know that um, they had to have built an air unit before this. Otherwise, this would be complete a long time ago. And you also know that it's not a liberator because liberators wouldn't finish until about this time in the game. Or maybe a little earlier, but not this late for sure. So we know that this is a mind drop build. 
Could have been a Viking, I guess, as well, but you would have seen the Viking in here. So we know it's a mind drop build. And so what I do is I reposition my stalkers over here. This is definitely a little bit of a risky play, but you gotta, you gotta take the risky play sometimes. <laughs> and so we see the medevac coming in. And it takes nine stalkers to one shot a medevac. So if five is a two shot or three is a three shot. So pretty nice opening so far. We cleared his medevac. We don't have to worry about anything. So I move all my stalkers to the third base. Keep in mind that I know he only has one unit because he was uh, getting some add-ons for his barracks. So there's there's no units on the map for sure, 100%. So I'm making my Colossus. I'm going into a fast blink. A lot of people are getting charge these days. See people getting fast charge with their Colossus. You really shouldn't be doing that. That's kind of a big mistake. You It might look really good on paper at first. Because, you know, Colossus and Charger Lots are going to decimate any Terran army. But the problem is that you already have a really good army with this type of style. Like, if you're playing Colossus and um, Stalkers, this, this already wrecks any bio units pretty hard. So you don't really need that charge. And it's, it's a little bit of a crutch, right? Because if you have charge, you don't have blink. And you really need blink with this style to maintain some form of mobility to be able to defend drops so if you're going charge here that's a big mistake you should stay away from that but okay so we're getting plus one we're getting three gates so a total of six and six is just a pretty good number to build a stalker uh composition and i want to build a stalker composition because again I already have really good units against uh, straight up attacks. So what I need to do is develop my mobility at this phase of the game. And that way I can defend anything that comes at me. So in a second here, you'll see me put my second Colossus and some Stalkers in the main. And then I'll have this group of Sentry Stalker on this side. So we'll be able to defend anything that comes at us. Now over here on Timothy's side, we see that he's making a pretty big blunder, which is why this attack is gonna fail you probably this army looks super small to you because it is it's really really tiny for this time in the game and the reason it's so tiny is because he's making way too many SCVs for what he wants to do so normally there's a couple main ways the Terran can play <clears throat> one of the ways they can play is the sort of like three three one one big push timing you make a ton of bio and then you take a really late third um, and you don't make this many SCV because if you make this many SCV, you can't afford all the units you need. So he's kind of doing middle of the road stuff. Like he's making a lot of SCV, but they're not all mining, right? And he has nowhere to send them either because his third base just started. So either he could have taken a very fast third and then had all these SCVs actually mining and played a pretty good macro game. Like you can see here, his SCV count's pretty decent. Or he could have uh, committed more to this push and not made so many SCVs, and then he would have a really, really strong attack here. So that's his mistake in this game. You can see me poke out here pretty boldly. Get a little medevac shot there. He backs up. So here I'm actually kind of confused why his army is so tiny, because <laughs> I expected this to be a little bit of a struggle, actually. I thought he was doing a, a really heavy 3 Rex timing. Here you can see me sitting up this uh, this main group of units. I had them over here because I assumed that I would notice if he flew a medevac in, but apparently I'm blind. So this actually snuck by me. Oh, and the other reason it was here is because if he did go for a big push just on one side, then um, this might have been a little bit too small to deal with that. So this, this would have been close enough that I could bring it in here if I needed, and also a little closer to the main if I needed to bring it over there was my reasoning but okay so this is pretty easy to defend <clears throat> we push him away with a uh, Colossus Stalker and my blinks almost done now so he's pretty much done with his aggression at this point in the game it's gonna be pretty hard for him to make this work and from here I'm thinking about doing a push So my plan is to get like three Colossus is a pretty solid number. And then I'm going to go do a push on his third base when he takes it. 
and then I'm gonna transition into a later game with um, maybe Storm and uh, Charge Lots, or maybe Archon Charge Lot even. But something pretty aggressive after this super solid safe opening. So here's our three Colossus. I'm making a War Prism. It's time to go put on some of our some pressure of our own. Take our fourth base, and usually what I like to do is go up to maybe 74, 75 workers. Play a pretty aggressive tempo style game. And maybe you guys recognize this point in the game from the intro. <laughs> but this goes a lot better than I expected. I actually was thinking about just backing up here after putting on this attack. Like this isn't really that committed to be honest. But his army is so tiny and I just saw this medevac boost away actually with this observer. So I know that his army is super small. And I also know that this medevac is somewhere out on the map. Actually, I thought it was like over here. I didn't realize it was so close to my base. Um, but I thought he had one medevac over there, and I thought he had a marine medevac over on this side as well. And so after seeing this army was super tiny, I was like, you know what? We'll just we'll just go for this attack. This is a super, super sad army. And then I warped some zealots back over here because of that medevac, but uh, in retrospect, these would have been much better as stalkers. I thought this was a marine drop, not a mine drop. But, um, that goes okay as well. Some nice forest fields. He doesn't quite have his armor, so I'm doing quite a bit of bonus damage. And he's kind of pincered off from uh, defending these SCVs, so this is going super good. I can honestly trade this army out right now and it would be totally fine because of the worker lead I've generated. But yeah, he doesn't he doesn't have too much to deal with this on this side. And my stalkers are dealing with these marines over here, so just a super clean uh, finish to this game. And this kind of all traces back to to him not developing his his build correctly, like not getting his CC quick if he wanted to take a fast third and make SCVs, or not committing as much to his 3-1-1. So if you're a Terran player, take some notes. Make sure your uh, plan is pretty precise. And, uh, and it'll work a lot better. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.